Well, I'm excited. Y'all excited? Listen to that. I, I'm in, I've been in Florida for five days, so I'm saying y'all now. You know, I, I, I must be Southern. You know, I am from Southern California. So, you know, when people say, uh, you know, what side of the kingdom are you from? I say I'm from the South side. So you don't want to mess with me. Okay. Because I have a past. <laughs> Anyways. Well, let me, let me share a little bit about myself before we go into the word. You know, I'm 29 years old. Uh, I've been in 48 countries. I lived in a Muslim country for three years preaching the gospel. I'm fluent in five languages. Uh, I have a doctorate degree of theology. Uh, I planted three churches in Southern California. Currently, we have two churches. Uh, our 10-year vision is to see 10 million souls saved. In the last three years, we've seen 750,000 souls saved. Uh, I helped produce four different docu-movies because I believe that the cheesy, corny Christian stuff needs to go and we need the real, raw, radical, revival, you know, content on Hollywood, which is turning to Holly, Hollywood. Amen. And, uh, you know, I love revival. I love awakening. I love family. My dad's a pastor. Uh, I was a backslidden pastor's kid my whole life. I used to be one of the biggest ecstasy dealers in Los Angeles, and then the Lord saved me. He kicked me out. I went to Australia at the age of 18, and since then, the Lord had a mark on me, and I've never been the same since. And it's been 11 years full-time with Jesus, 11 years in full-time ministry. So let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. So that's just a little bit about my life. And, uh, you know, I just want to say to you before we go into the Word that many of you have passed the test. Many of you have passed the test. Some of you, you've been in the greatest warfare, the greatest challenge, the greatest test. But I want to prophesy that you have passed the test. No longer will you go around a mountain, go around the wilderness stuck for the next 40 years. But you have passed the test. Who am I talking to? Your secret conversations where you could have gossiped, you've passed the test. Where you could have been stingy, but instead you were generous. You showed honor. You could have been angry, held on to resentment and bitterness. You have passed the test. Come on, somebody. And I'm telling you, Freedom Destiny Church, you have passed the test. Who am I talking to right now? I said you've passed the test. Listen, you could have gone to court. Listen, I have four felonies as a minor. I should have been shot dead. I should have been in prison or, you know, I should have been locked up. But the Lord had his hand on my life. And praise God for the grace of God that we are continuing to pass the test. You could be in court. There could be indictments against you. But I'm prophesying right now, you have passed the test. Woo! Father, I pray today. And as we continue to flow with you, that you would move in signs, wonders, and miracles. Every hungry heart, feed them, bless them. Lord, I pray for a spirit of revival and awakening in this place, God. I ask you, Father, that you will confirm the word of this servant. That you would move with confirming words, with conf confirming manifestations of power and miracles. This is your day. We thank you for what you're doing at Freedom Destiny Church and in Jacksonville, Florida. Someone say... Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Today I want to talk about the seven realms of breakthrough. Someone say seven realms of breakthrough. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you ready to get blessed? Someone say, God bless your face. Today I want to talk about seven realms of breakthrough. Amen. And uh, first and foremost, I want to talk to you about what is a realm. I'm sure you've heard of that term. That word, whenever you come to church or whenever you uh, listen to some charismatic uh, Pentecostal type of preachers. You know, people who love the Lord, who want the more of God. Amen. So a realm is a certain county or a district within a kingdom. Imagine back in the old days in the United Kingdom or in Europe, there were kingdoms. Some would say kingdoms. Do you know that you and I, that we are part of the kingdom? Most of us were only a part of the church. So we're so used to church models, structures, and religion, but we're not but just part of the church. We're part of the kingdom, which means that your lifestyle is much more different than even when you leave this building and when you leave these doors. Someone say church age, 
kingdom age. We are a part of the kingdom age. Come on, somebody. All right? The, the church is usually dominated by pastors and teachers and evangelists. But the kingdom is dominated by kings and queens, people of a royal priesthood, anointed by the spirit of the sovereign Lord. We are part of the kingdom. The Bible says that the kingdom of light is in battle with the kingdom of darkness. Come on, somebody. So this is a battle of the kingdom. So imagine in every kingdom there are sectors or there's things called realms. Someone say realms. And every realm, which is a county or a district, a sector, a sphere, in every realm there are lords. Someone say lords. Does not the Bible say that Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords? What does that make you? A king. Then why are you acting like a peasant? Why are you acting like a servant? Why are you still in poverty-minded thinking when you should be thinking like a king? Come on, somebody. A king decrees while a peasant is always worried and concerned. We don't stress. We're blessed. You're too anointed to be disappointed. My gosh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Too many church people are busy being peasants and servants rather than kings. Where we operate in ruling and reigning and having dominion. We're meant to have dominion over the weather. Dominion over coronavirus. Dominion in your home atmosphere. Listen, the reason why some of you are not respected is because your children don't even respect you. You don't even know how to have dominion in your marriage bed. You don't even know how to have dominion in your room. So therefore, you don't have dominion in your finances. You don't have dominion in your relationships. You don't even have dominion over your heart, your emotions. I'm telling you, you are meant to have dominion by the power, by the spirit of God. The anointing does something. It prospers you. It matures you. It makes you excellent. It causes you to become a king. Who am I talking to right now? I pray that the Holy Ghost will break off that poverty mentality in this region. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you. I remember poverty is not a financial thing. It's a mentality. Poverty is not material. It is a mindset. But you have a kingdom mindset. Someone say amen. King of kings and Lord of lords. Every kingdom has realms. Someone say realms. I pray that God will open up new realms to you. Let me try this side. I like this lady here. I pray that God will open up new realms for you. How many realms are there in a kingdom? Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, we are part of the kingdom that never ends. That is so vast. That is limitless. I don't know about you, but I grew up as a pastor's kid in stinking religion and tradition. I was bored. I used to play drums on the worship team, drunk and high every service. But now we're high on the Holy Ghost. Because now there ain't no high like the most high. Come on, somebody. Every year is Jubilee, every day is Sabbath, and every hour is happy hour. The kingdom of God is unlimited, limitless. Let me ask you, how many realms do you have access to today? Growing up in the church as a pastor's kid, I was only taught dogma. Do this, don't do that. Be faithful, don't do this. That was it. How many realms did I have? Works. But I'm telling you, there's realms of miracles, realms of angels, realms of the seer anointing, of the prophetic, words of knowledge, healing, financial miracles, breakthrough. There's so many different realms in the kingdom of God. I pray that God will open up new realms for you in Jesus' name. I said realms of favor. Realms of breakthrough. Realms of godly relationships. I pray that God will open up realms of promotion. Realms of suddenly. You know, when, whenever I go somewhere, favor, open doors, bam, bam, things just begin to happen quickly. I pray that same grace comes upon you. The Bible says you are partakers of the grace of God. What are you partaking of? 
When we have communion, we partake of the same bread. I'm telling you, God is giving you the best bread. You only partake of the best. This is good. Do you know, do you, do you know how I know it's good? Because y'all are really quiet. Which means you're thinking. Kingdom has realms. Whew. You know the demonic kingdom has realms too. How many people who operate in witchcraft, voodoo, shamanism, actually have greater realms of the demonic than you Christians? They know how to move and minister with fallen angels. They know how to move and, and, and minister with uh, dark spirits. But how many of you know how to move and minister with the angels of God? With the ministering spirits of flames of fire and winds of change. Ooh, I'm preaching good today. Someone say realms. Every kingdom has realms. The size and the vastness, the glory, the excellency, the goodness of a kingdom is determined by how many realms are in it and how many lords are operating over each realm. Someone say, Jesus is opening up more realms in my life. If you receive it, say amen. If you receive it, say it's mine. If you receive it, say amen. Come on, I can't hear you. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I declare a decree in Jacksonville. God is opening up more realms of the kingdom of God. Fire of God. In the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Someone say realms. Today I want to talk to you about seven different realms. Expect it. By the end of 2020, I prophesy as a man of God. By the end of 2020, God is opening up these seven different realms in your life. Oh, let me go to this side. I like this side here. Rabo Sheke. Is it okay to pray in tongues? Because I, I will interpret right after. Trust me. I said by the end of 2020, the Lord Jesus Christ will open up these seven different realms in your life. I declare it as a man of God. Nothing shall stop it. Nothing will come against it. If you are seated in heavenly places in this church today, I declare that the Lord Jesus Christ will open up these seven different realms over your life. No devil, no witch, no hex, no vex, no occultic group, no democratic party can stop it. Shout hallelujah. Shout fire. Shout glory. Come on, give the Lord a shout of prayer. Hallelujah. No demon can stop it. No demon crack can stop it. Sorry if I get a little political this morning. No demon, no occultic group, no witch, no religious traditional spirit. Nothing can stop it. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy right now. And I'm telling you. You're going to thank me. So you're welcome. Let's go to the word of God. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. If you're writing notes, God bless you. If you're not writing notes, you are the note. And uh, you're going to pass this wonderful school test. All right? <laughs> Seven different realms. Some say God has given me access. Mm, my God, this is so good. And at the end, I will prophesy, and I will minister, and you will be blessed, and you will get whacked in the Holy Ghost. Someone say overflow. Someone say I'm ready. Someone say I'm hungry. Oh, Ooh, I feel like I'm in a Pentecostal church now. I felt a little Presbyterian earlier, but now I feel Pentecostal. I need that Stephen Furtick Where are you at? 2 Samuel chapter 5. Let's go over to verse 17. Whew. But this is a key verse here. 2 Samuel 5, 17. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. But David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. 
Now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord. Say that with me. David inquired of the Lord. One more time. David inquired of the Lord. Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up. For I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. And David came to Baal Perazom. And David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breaking flood. Therefore, the name of that place is called Baal Perazim. And the Philistines left their idols there. And David and his men carried them away. Someone say amen. Listen, number one, the first realm of breakthrough God is releasing over you is himself. He is the Lord of the breakthrough. Are you ready to shake hands with breakthrough? Some will say, Jesus is the Lord of my breakthrough. Listen, the reason why most people do not break through in life is because they're stagnant. How do you break through? You inquire of the Lord. Most of you are too busy doing traditions, what you're used to from yesterday. Listen, yesterday's manna will not feed you. If you eat yesterday's manna, do you know what you get? Parasites in your stomach. You have maggots, you have parasites, and you're wondering why you're continually sick because you're still eating yesterday's tradition. There's fresh bread, fresh manna that your grandmama can't even cook. I went there today. You need to inquire of the Lord. Come on. If you're intimate with God, you ask him, Lord, I invite you into this situation. Why am I not seeing financial breakthrough? Why am I not seeing the breakthrough in the crowds? Why am I not seeing breakthrough in my job place or my promotion? You inquire and then God will answer. He will answer by fire. I'm telling you right now, when you inquire of Jesus, you will have the Lord of the breakthrough on your side. His name is is breakthrough the enemies were defeated they destroyed all the idols when God shows up every idol is destroyed all your enemies are defeated and Jesus Christ is glorified the first realm of breakthrough God is opening up over your life is your experience and understanding and relationship with him. I'm telling you, even by the end of the service, your experience and relationship with God is changing. Some say breakthrough. Some say, Jesus, you are the Lord of the breakthrough. Are you ready to shake hands with breakthrough? He has a name. Jesus is breakthrough. Are you ready to shake hands? Lift, stretch out your hands right now. Shake hands with breakthrough. Come on. Sha shake hands with breakthrough. If he's the Lord of the breakthrough and if he lives on the inside of you, what does that make you? Someone say breakthrough. Are you ready for your experience with God to change? He's not a boring God. He's not boring. He is vivacious. He is experiential. He is heavenly. He's majestic, glorious. There's not, even, there's not even enough human vernacular terms and words to fully describe him. It takes all of eternity to even get a glimpse of who he actually is. Amen. Someone say a breakthrough. Someone say, I'm ready to experience God in supernatural ways. If you receive that, say amen. So the first realm of breakthrough is God himself. It all starts with him and it ends with him. Amen. Some say you're preaching good, PB. Number two, the second realm of breakthrough you can experience and expect in this season is your mind. I speak breakthrough thinking over you right now. I speak breakthrough in your mind. No more demonic witchcraft. No more stress. No more anxiety. No more tossing and turning around in the midnight hour wondering where your children are. I speak breakthrough in your mind. The reason why most people do not tap into creativity is because they're too bogged up with stress in their mind. There was a statistic years ago that said 80% of people in the hospital today are there because of mental illnesses. I destroy the spirit of depression. I destroy the spirit of suicide. I destroy those false voices that are speaking to you. The Bible says that my sheep know my voice. I'm sorry. You're deceived. 
stop listening to those 99 voices. Stop listening to your emotions, your feelings. Stop listening to what CNN is talking to you about. You need to listen to the word of God. Someone shout fire. I speak breakthrough in your mind. That God will download strategies from heaven into your mind. That's why the Bible says love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind. <gasps> we can actually love God with our mind? Which means that we Christians can actually be intellectual and smart, not just be spiritual? So many of us were so churchy and spiritual that we're actually stupid. Sorry, I said the big S word and I could say no. I break off the spirit of stupid off of you in Jesus' name. We as believers need to be the most anointed, the most brilliant, the most intellectual. We need to be the most sophisticated. I'm 29 years old. I've, I've been in Dubai, the richest city on earth, a number of times. I've been in Israel. I have cahoots with Jewish people, with rabbis, with millionaires, multimillionaires. I know how to talk. I know how to have a nice conversation. There was a young man. He, he was working at the hotel at the Hampton Inn for the last four days. And he keeps seeing me with my entourage and how I carry myself. 19 years old. And today he says, can I have your phone number? I know it might sound weird, but I just want to ask you for your advice. I said, yeah, sure, here's my phone number. This young man is looking for mentors because he sees something on my life just by how I carry myself. In a few minutes in the hotel lobby. Why am I saying this? Because you are meant to be the brightest. The Bible says that there's an excellent spirit like Daniel that wants to come upon your life. I said the spirit of excellency. Daniel was ten times better than all the other witches in the land. I pray for a ten times better anointing over your life. Oh my gosh. You will be ten times better than anybody else in your industry. This church will be 10 times more holy, 10 times more fiery, 10 times more apostolic, 10 times more loving than any other church in the region. And that's not pride, honey. That's humility. The Bible says Daniel was 10 times. I pray for a spirit of excellency on your life. Come on, somebody. We as Christians are meant to be the leaders, not the followers. We're meant to be innovative, creative. We're meant to be dynamic. I've produced four different movies. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on these movies. Red carpet deals, music producer. We've done all that. Come on. I pray that God will break through in your mind. Put your hands on your heads right here. Come on. Some of you got some big heads. So put both of your hands on your heads. God, I pray. For the break or anointing to come upon their minds. That you will have breakthrough thinking, innovative ideas. That you will have God ideas. That things will go off like light bulbs. Come on. I'm telling you, God is giving you solutions to the problems. God is giving you breakthrough thinking right now. You are an asset, not a liability. In the name of Jesus, everyone say amen. My gosh, it's hard in this Presbyterian church. Number three, the third realm of breakthrough the Lord has given you. And I know, I know Jacksonville is kind of a military place. Listen, this is not the military. You can hoot and holler. <laughs> Number three, the first re third realm of breakthrough God has given you is in your emotions. Some say emotions. <sighs> Who am I talking to right now? You're still dealing with trauma. You're still triggered by different issues. You still feel offended. You're still haunted by yesterday's memories of how they left you. They rejected you. They molested you. They abused you. They abandoned you. Your, your emotions are so riled up that you can't even feel peace. God wants to heal your emotions. Listen, too many people are still broken with baggage from yesterday. There's too many wounded ministers. There's too many wounded Christians. There's so much drama and yuckiness and gunk in the church. Why? We should be the most emotionally whole we should be the most emotionally free can you actually love me without trying to manipulate me can you actually bless me without trying to get something from me I'm telling you I break off the spirit of manipulation do you know what that is it's witchcraft 
I don't want no witty, crafty, witchcraft on my life. Listen, I'm free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Here's the thing. Most false prophets will constantly manipulate people who are broken and wounded. When you're broken and wounded, you have an open door and you think everybody's your boyfriend. But no, they're just being a gentleman. But you think they're your boyfriend because you're broken and wounded. Fire of God. Fire of God. I pray every soul tie would be broken off. I'm telling you, your destiny is so great. You need to stop being bound to yesterday. You need to stop being codependent. You need to stop being toxic. God is breaking off toxic mindsets and emotions from you. Ooh, I feel freedom in this place. And listen, elders, elders, man, y'all got more baggage than young people. I remember years ago, I was pastoring a church and all we had was homeless people and prostitutes and gangsters in the, in the city, in the streets of L.A. And I said, God, I, I thought you called me to the youth, but all I see is old people. And what did God say? He said, son, don't they act more like kids than kids? I said, yeah. He said, you're welcome. <laughs> a lot of you are just big, big kids. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. Oh, babies, yeah. I thought I smelled something on this side anyways. <laughs> you smelt it, you dealt it. God. <laughs> Come on. I know most of you were stocking up for the end times toilet paper revival. <laughs> Come on. I, I saw a roll just go down in the spirit. I saw that. Some of you were about to TP your pastor's house. I rebuked that. The third realm of breakthrough in your life is in your emotional health, is in your soul. Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to? Pray that you will prosper as your soul prospers. Why would you prosper financially if your soul is still as a little child? Lord, bless these people. Someone say amen. The fourth realm of breakthrough you can expect in your life is relationships. Someone say relationships. Someone say, Jesus has given me divine kingdom destiny relationships. Listen, time is short. Where we are and where we're going cannot be played, tainted, or messed with. Time is short. Stop wasting your time with people who only drain you and are leeches and vampires in the spirit. All they do is suck the living life out of you. They don't edify you. They don't encourage you. They don't sharpen you. They don't help give life into your spirit. They don't lead you into your destiny. All they do is drag, 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 drain, drain, drain. God is bringing you divine appointments. People who will fight for you. My gosh. I feel like I'm speaking to angels right now. God is bringing you people who will, will help and not complain. People who will serve with a willing heart, not nag and complain and have an attitude. Oh, you're wondering why you're not breaking through in life? It's because of you. Oh, you're wondering why nothing's changing in life? It's because you still got that chip on your shoulders. You still got an attitude. I'm telling you, God wants to bring the people that you are like. You attract the type of people that you are like. God is bringing you divine kingdom destiny relationships. Remember, before David became king, he had a Jonathan. Before Jesus became, started his messianic ministry, he had a John the Baptist. You need people, the right people in your life to help launch you into your destiny. It's not about your fake book followers. It's not about your frenemies on YouTube. It's not about your social media following. It's not about the quantity of people around you. It's about the right people. In every season, 
God will bring new people of kingdom destiny. I prophesy new kingdom relationships where you felt stuck, where you felt like your circle was small. God is about to enlarge it. God is about to expand like Dr. Candace said this morning. God's about to give you new kingdom connections. I said he's the Lord of the breakthrough and I speak breakthrough in the realm of relationships. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Kingdom relationships. People who will not backstab you and betray you like another Judas. People will actually have your back. Who will protect you. Who will cover you. Who will bring you into prayer. Not gossip and slander about you behind your back. Right when you leave the room, they begin to gossip and, and slander and they're trying to take your church members. People who are integral and can be trusted. I pray that that will be you. I pray that you will be a woman, a man of kingdom destiny in Jesus' name. Expect breakthrough in kingdom relationships. The fifth realm of breakthrough. My God, this is so good. I'm preaching myself to life. I tell people all the time. When I preach, I'm not preaching for you. I'm preaching for me. Mm-mm-mm. It's finger licking good. The fifth realm of breakthrough you can expect in your life is financial flow. Okay, let me, let me talk to this side. All right. Financial flow. No longer will you be an employee. You will be an employer. I was talking to that young man this morning, and I said, who are you voting for, young man? I said, you better vote for Trump. And he said, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, I was thinking about Biden and all that. And, but then the taxes, you know, it's going to cut everything. I said, imagine, I said, how much do you make in two weeks? He said, $800, you know, at the Hampton Inn. He said, uh, he said $800 in two weeks. I said, listen, if you vote for Biden, you're probably going to get $700 taken out of your paycheck. No longer will you be an employee, you will be an employer. No longer will you rent rooms from people you will rent out to others. I break off the spirit of rent and I release the spirit of ownership. The Bible says you shall own lands. You will own vineyards. You will own properties. You will own. Stop being just a renter. I'm telling you, you are meant to rent out to others. The Bible says you will not be the receiver. You will be the lender. You will not just be the taker, but you will be the giver. I'm telling you, God wants to break off the spirit of poverty. Stop being a stingy thinker. Stop being a stingy giver. Give generously and you will sow and you shall reap. Some would say reap. Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you're not happy with what you're reaping in life, then you need to change your sowing game. If you're not happy with the friendships you're receiving in your life, then maybe you need to change what you're sowing. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. My gosh. This COVID-19 season, man, my church, my life, we've been so blessed. We've been so blessed. Like God's been prospering us because he's been rewarding and honoring us for taking a stand for the truth and righteousness. The Lord told me months ago, he said, Ben, when you align yourself with truth and righteousness, fight for the unborn, for the preborn. When you stand against racism, when you begin to speak the truth, the word of God, then the storehouses of heaven will be opened up to you. I'm telling you, God is not a stingy, poor, little, dinky idol. He is a rich, abundant God. Come on. The heavens of the earth belong to him. He has, a, he owns the, the thousand cattle on a thousand hills. All of it is yours. He's your daddy. But I know you, your daddy only gave you a chicken wing, not, not the leg, not the breast, not the thigh. He only gave you one wing. That's it. I know. But he's not like that. He's a good father. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. (laughs) 
I pray that you will be a funder of the gospel. Let me try this side. I pray that you will be a funder of the gospel. You know, I love President Trump because even before he ran for president, he was a billionaire. And I tell people, at least respect him as a billionaire. And I remember watching an interview with him. And uh, somebody questioned him and said, well, if you run for presidency, are people going to, you know, ask you all these questions because you own all these businesses? And what does Trump say? He says, you know, I employ 150,000 people. I employ 150,000 people. Imagine how many families are being blessed just by this one man. And how many people are you employing? And you're still the employee and you're complaining about your boss. I'm telling you, you're meant to be a boss. You're meant to be a lord. You're meant to be a provider. My gosh. You're meant to own businesses. Who am I talking to right now? I'm 29 years old. I run five organizations at the age of 29. And trust me, each one is doing really good. But it's just the beginning. You will own businesses. You will own properties. You will destroy poverty. You will deliver families from systemic poverty. You will be a funder. You will give generously. Come on, somebody. You will be a funder of the gospel of the kingdom of God. I pray that people in here will be able to give $1 million checks one day. You will be able to give $1 million checks for the kingdom of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not just receive, but give. My gosh, I remember years ago, it was hard for me to give $50 into the offering bucket. Now I give $50 just to the, uh, just to the uh, bellboy. I give $50 to, you know, anybody who opens a door for me. It was hard for me to give $50. Now in the offering bucket, 100, 500, 1,000, just like that. It's a normal thing now. I'm telling you, God wants to release abundance over your life. I said, expect the fourth realm of breakthrough in your life. Financial flow financial flow the bible says streams of living water live on the inside of you it shall bubble and gush up doesn't say one stream says multiple streams someone say streams of income my gosh like i said you're welcome i pray that you will flow and bubble up with streams of income Years ago, the Lord rebuked me. When I was a younger man, I was a younger pastor, I had a lot more time. And I was driving Uber. I was driving Uber and I was complaining to God. I said, Lord, you know, I didn't even have a salary, you know. And I was complaining to the Lord. I said, God, I need more money. You know, this girlfriend I had at the time, she was taking everything from me. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking about, you know, proposing and engaging. Thank God I did it. My gosh. And I hope she's watching. Anyways, I'm kidding. <laughs> And I was, I was driving Uber on my free time, and I said, God, I need more money. And the Lord speaks to me. He says, son, write the book. I said, I don't want to write no stinking book. I'm complaining about how I have no money. And God says, write the book. And I said, I don't want to write no book. He says, if you do not write the book, you need to stop complaining that you don't have any money. I'm giving you a God idea to bring in some finances. You expect a free handout, God is trying to give you a hand up. You expect trees when God is giving you a seed. Write the book, otherwise stop complaining. Who am I talking to right now? There's ideas, there's creative solutions. He's downloaded, deposited in your spirit. Once you begin to be a good steward into that, then things open up in your life. Look at me now, from then to now. Amen. One act of obedience will open up hundreds of doors you don't even know about. One act of obedience will open up hundreds of doors you don't even know about. Someone say amen. I said breakthrough in your financial flow. Come on baby boomers, elders. Breakthrough in your financial flow. The Bible says a good man or woman will leave an inheritance to their children's children. Breakthrough in your financial flow. Woo, my gosh. I'm about to sew into that one, Pastor Ben. Thank you very much. 
The sixth realm of breakthrough for you to expect is capacity. Capacity. Someone say capacity. You know, we just, this is our fifth day together, uh, Dr. Candace, Pastor Adam. Our fifth day. Most people can't even stay in church for one day. This is our fifth continual day. God is stretching your capacity. When you get trained for the military, the Navy SEALs, what do you do? They break you. They break your legs because they're stretching your capacity. Most people are going crazy right now. They're not able to meet their friends. They're not going to their jobs. They're committing suicide. They're on antidepressants. They're taking uh, medicine and pharmaceuticals, stuck on the spirit of big pharma. Their, their capacity is being overstretched. God is stretching your capacity in him so that you could have more. When you're faithful with a little, you will be faithful over much. But too many people begin to stress out and break out and break down. And they begin to, uh, 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 I can't compute. Uh, 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 I'm still on Macintosh. Uh. And too many people begin to break down because they can't handle a greater capacity. But I'm telling you right now, God is able to entrust you with more because you're willing to be stretched. I like this side today, I'm telling you. The blessings of God will come and it will not ruin you. God will entrust you with more realms. Someone say realms. Someone say capacity. Some of you are used to church being over right now. Some of you are used to five songs in worship what about 50 some of us are used to only giving 20 dollars in the offering basket what about two hundos stretch your capacity some of us are used to only coming to church on a sunday i love what pastor adam said why don't you come to wednesday night bible study stretch your capacity and see what happens God is stretching, increasing your capacity so that you will have and handle more for the glory of God. Stop asking what can America do for you. Ask what can you do for America. Stop being needy. Stop being a po beggar where you always got a free handout just asking, wanting to take. Give, give, bless, bless. Oh my gosh, this is so good. The sixth realm of breakthrough you can't expect is capacity. Most people crash under pressure. But you know what pressure creates? Diamonds. If you haven't noticed, I like diamonds. I like rubies. I like topaz. I like amethyst. I like uh, sapphire. I like emeralds. I like it all. Do you know why? Because Jesus as a great high priest has the ephod of the 12 stones of Israel. You better get used to it. The streets of heaven are made of gold. The gates of God is made out of pearls. All the foundations are made of different stones. You better get used to it. Why do you think gold does manifest in our meetings? Because you're walking in heavenly places, so it manifests on earth. What do you think Lucifer was made of? You see in the book of Ezekiel, Lucifer as a fallen angel at that time, he was filled with gemstones all over his body. Amen. Pressure creates diamonds. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a dark coal. I want to push, become a diamond. Multifaceted. Turn me in any angle and I'm going to shine light. Turn me in any angle and I'm going to be cutthroat. Any angle, multifaceted, light, 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 light. Capacity, pressure, stress. What broke others will not break you. What destroyed others will not destroy you. It may have destroyed others' families, but not yours. You have the realm of breakthrough on your life. The favor of God is upon your life. I wish somebody heard me in this Methodist church. And the seventh realm of breakthrough that you can expect by the end of 2020. Expect all this by the end of 2020, in the next two months. 
Who believes in his word? I wish somebody in this Episcopalian church believed these words. Come on, Debbie. Come on, Dr. Candice. Financial flow, relationships, capacity, breakthrough thinking, emotions. No more drag queens, no more dragging relationships. You will have kingdom destiny relationships. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, high five your neighbor, say breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Come on, high five your neighbor, say breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Someone say breakthrough. Breakthrough in every wall, every hindrance, every limitation. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Come on, somebody. That's why I need the Stephen Furtick man. Yay! I'll have the worship team up in a minute or so. And this is the seventh realm of breakthrough. This is going to bless your face. If those masks couldn't bless your face, your diamond glitter masks, your Trump 2020 masks, your Jesus Christ masks, if those masks couldn't bless your face, <laughs> then this word will bless your face. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The seventh realm of breakthrough for you to expect by the end of 2020 is your reputation. Is your name. There's a warfare against your name and your reputation. But you will break through in Jesus' name. The next time someone hears the name Freedom Destiny Church, there will be a fear, a reverence, and an honor. The next time someone hears the name Dr. Candace Smitherman, there will be a respect and an honor that comes. I said shame and dishonor is far from you and from your family name. Listen, Jacksonville, Middleburg, may be known for poverty. Listen, the first day I arrived into Middleburg, I saw a truck with two Confederate flags. And I said, ooh, Jesus. The scapegoat, the shame, the name, the reputation of Middleburg is passing and God is releasing a new name. Someone say a new name. God is releasing a new name. Someone say a new name. The Bible says a good name, a good reputation is worth more than diamonds and rubies. I don't know about you, but I want a good name. I want a good name in the land. I want a good name in the community. I want a good name in Christendom. Listen, I don't care if people praise your name on earth. I care if Jesus recognizes my name at the pearly gates before the Father. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And he hears me when I call. He knows your name. He knows your every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And he hears you when you call. I have a father. He calls me his own. Before even time began, my life was in his hands. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. He hears you when you call. Just have the keyboard just playing for a bit. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? If you've been to Jerusalem like I have, if you've been to Israel, I've been to Israel twice in the last three years. And y'all can join me next year if you want to join. <laughs> or not. That's fine. 
those seats will be given to people who actually want to go. Yes, Jesus! My Korean mama said, Jesus! Jesus! So I used to say Jesus the whole, for a long time until I, I realized it was Jesus, not Jesus. <laughs> so cute. But you see, Nazareth is a place that's filled with rocks and stones. It's hilly. There's lots of rocks, lots of stones. Can anything good come out of a stony place? Can anything good come out of a rocky place? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? The seventh realm of breakthrough in your life you can expect is breakthrough in your name. Breakthrough in your reputation. Let me ask you, when you think about McDonald's, what do you expect? When you think about Apple, what do you expect? When you think about the military, the Navy, what do you expect? When you think about freedom destiny, what do you expect? When you think about yourself, what do you expect? When people think about you, what do they expect? God is changing your name. You're going from McDonald's to Morton Steakhouse. You're going from H&M to Louis Vuitton. You're going from Toyota to Mercedes-Benz. I was shocked because I didn't see any German European cars in this whole town the last five days. Maybe, oh, the other side, okay. <laughs> but come on, bring it to this side, Jesus. I'm like, wow, these people are really proud of their American cars. You know, I used to have a Ford Mustang, but man, my Audi has nothing on this Ford Mustang no more. I feel like I'm from Middleburg. Yeehaw. All I see is American. This is built for tough. Yeehaw. We America, baby. We America. On the other side, that's where all the foreign foreigner cars are. You know, those, those Germans and those Japanese and those Koreans. We love you, God. Thank you. I, I love me too. You're going from Toyota to Mercedes-Benz. There's a name change that's coming to you. Come on, somebody. Listen, listen. I want to read to you a scripture here. Genesis 12, 2. God makes a promise to Abraham. Does that name sound familiar to anybody? Abraham, ham, ha. All right, some of y'all like your ham for Thanksgiving. Abraham. Genesis 12, 2. God says to Abraham, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. So that you will be able to, I will make your name great. Was that only for Abraham or was that for everybody in the Abrahamic covenant? I pray that God will make your name great. Come on, Sherry. I pray that God will make your name great. This is not false humility. This is real humility. I love what David said. David begins in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8 to 9. 2 Samuel 7, 8 to 9. Therefore, you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep that you should be prince over my people Israel and I have been with you wherever you went and I have cut off all your enemies from before you I will make for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth God says to David because you love me I'm gonna make your name great do you want to be known for sin do you want to be known for pedophilia do you want to be known for pornography or do you want to be known for purity, righteousness, integrity, holiness? I will make your name great, says the Lord. Jacksonville will be known for Jesus Christ more than the military.
Florida will be known more for Jesus Christ than Disney World. Freedom Destiny Church will be known more for the love for God and for people than anything else. God says, I will make your name great. You know, people try to talk bad about you, try to put you down. No, God says, this one's mine. This one's mine. This one's mine. Someone say amen. I want to share another scripture. Y'all are doing so good. Give yourselves a round of applause. Look at you. Wow, you made it through a one-hour sermon. And I, I do want to pray for some people. Amen. But I love this pastor. I got to share this. God is a name changer. He's a name changer. I love this story here. Genesis 35, 18. As her soul was passing, she was dying. She called his name Ben Oni. But his father called him. Only somebody knows the Bible. Rachel was dying as she was given birth. Excuse me, Leah was dying as she was giving birth. And as she was giving birth, she was dying. She named her son Ben Oni, which means the son of my shame, the son of my death. But the father said, no longer will I call you the son of my shame, but I will call you the son of my favor, Benjamin. He's giving you a new name. No longer will you be known for shame, sin, death, condemnation for problems of your baby mama. You will be known as children of favor. Children at the right hand of God. You will be known for the seven realms of breakthrough. I declare and I decree by the end of 2020 that in this church you will have breakthrough on every side. But expect these seven realms of breakthrough says God. You will begin to experience God in a new way. He's ball parazam. Are you ready to experience God like never before? Number two, are you ready to experience breakthrough in your mind? Someone say, I have the mind of Christ Jesus. Number three, are you ready for breakthrough in your heart, in your emotions? You are emotionally free. Come on, somebody. You are free to love again. You are free to trust again. I know it's hard for you to trust people, but you will be free to trust again. Number four, expect breakthrough in your relationships. Who am I talking to right now? Relationships. Expect breakthrough in your relationships. Number five, expect breakthrough in your financial flow. Come on, somebody. Do you know that there's more millionaires who are in their teenagers, teenage years right now than ever before? In California, there's over 60 millionaires that are teenagers. Do you know why? Because of video games. I pray that your teenagers will be millionaires in Jesus' name. I pray that your kids, your teenagers will be millionaires even before they're 18. It's all right, kids. You can clap for that one. Your parents may not clap for that, but you can clap for that. Number six, the sixth realm of breakthrough is your capacity. It's not going to break you. You're not going to be damaged goods, but you're going to be able to steward it properly in Jesus' name. God wants to give you 10 cities, not just one. Ooh, that was a prophetic word right there. Wow, Freedom Destiny Church. God wants to give you 10 cities, 10 church plants in Jesus' name. And the seventh realm of breakthrough is your name and your reputation. Your name will be respected. 
your name will be honored. Your name will be revered. There will be no shame, no scrutiny attached to your name. Your name will be respected by all. God will make your name great as you serve him, as you bless him. I declare and decree that no longer will Jacksonville be known for this and that, but it will be known as a city of refuge and a city of God. Come on, everybody, let's stand and let's worship the Lord. Come on, let's stand and let's worship the Lord. Praise the Lord.